Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment deck featuring three copies of Eater of Virtue as requested by one of my supporters on Patreon. A one mana legendary artifact equipment costs just one mana to equip giving plus two plus O oh, and when the equipped creature dies we exile it and we potentially transfer over any of its keywords to future creatures including keywords like double strike from our blade master, we've got haste on the rabbit battery and first strike on Ryu. So we don't have the most keywords in this deck but it's still very synergistic with our other equipment synergies and those also include the Bruinor Battle Hammer at 4 mana, the 5-3 Warrior that gives each equipped creature plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it and we can also pay 0 mana on the first equip ability each turn so we don't have to pay its mana cost. And then there's also Ryu as another powerful curve topper, a 3-3 legendary human samurai with first strike, and whenever a samurai or warrior we control attacks alone, we get to untap it, and if it's the first combat phase of the turn, there will be an additional combat phase afterwards. So Ryu works very well in an equipment deck, as we'll often have one large creature with a bunch of equipments stacked onto it, so it can easily attack past opposing blockers, and then in the second combat phase we can sometimes attack with our entire team to try and close out the game. And Ryu also works very nicely with Luminarch Aspirant. Despite it not being a samurai or warrior, it does allow us to potentially put an additional plus one counter on one of our creatures if we get a second combat phase, so that's quite synergistic. And then Akiri also potentially allows us to draw a card twice if we can attack with the same equipped creature in two combat phases. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we've got a bunch more Samurai and Warrior creatures. At 1 mana Fireblade Charger, a 1-1 one -one that gains haste as long as it's equipped, and when it dies it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so putting additional equipment onto it to increase its power is great, and additional plus 1 counters from Luminarch Aspirant also work quite nicely with it. We also have two copies of Rabbit Battery, a 1-1 one -one with haste, can be reconfigured for a single red, turning into an equipment, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus 1 and haste. Now keep in mind we cannot reconfigure for free using Bruinor, since that specifically requires the equip ability like the one on Eater of Virtue, but otherwise still quite synergistic with Bruinor, as it can give an additional plus 2 plus 0 bonus to one of our creatures. And then Boots of Speed, another 1 mana equipment, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus 0 and haste, equipping for 1 mana. So this one we can potentially equip for free onto Bruinor, so turn 4 we can play it, equip the Boots of Speed to it, and attack for 8 damage essentially out of nowhere. And then at 2 mana there's Core Blade Master, 1-1 one, one Double Strike, giving equipped to Warriors we control a Double Strike as well, so it does not apply to Samurai creatures, but we still have quite a few Warriors between our Fire Blade Charger, Akiri at 3 mana and Bruinor at 4, and Double Strike just a good ability with any equipment that can increase its power. And then we also have the full set of Selfless Samurai as a creature that can be sacrificed to give another creature indestructible until end of turn, so it can protect our more valuable creatures like our 3 and 4 drops, but it also potentially gives us a lifelink to an attacking Samurai or Warrior if it's attacking alone, so that can also be important in a racing situation, and especially alongside Ryu's ability can be very nice to swing a race back in our favor. And then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Akiri, could easily play a third copy, a legendary Core Warrior saying whenever we attack a player with one or more equipped creatures we get to draw a card, it's also great if we get additional combat steps to draw additional cards, and we can pay a white mana to unattach an equipment from one of our creatures to give it indestructible until end of turn, so it can be useful against sweeper effects. And then one of our most important equipment is a Maul of the Skyclaves, giving plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike to the equipped creature, and we can equip it right away when it enters the battlefield so we don't have to pay the 4 mana equip cost, and Bruinor another way to potentially circumvent the 4 mana equip cost as well. And then our mana base also includes Den of the Bugbear as an extra creature land to apply pressure with, great against control. So there's no room for interactive burn spells for instance, since we really need to have as many creatures and equipment as possible, so for the most part we're just trying to race opposing aggro decks, and we can do so quite nicely thanks to the lifelink from Selfless Samurai, the flying from Maul, and then of course the extra combat steps from Ryu can also come in handy. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one, probably go for battery. Turn two, samurai as we're unable to double spell charger and boots. Initiate can be annoying as it can also blow up our equipment later.
and a Thalia makes her equipment more expensive. Akira is nice, so can play Charger, Boots of Speed, and then just stay back next turn, play Akiri, and equip the Boots. Both creatures attack. Alright, I'm fine setting up a double block potentially. So given that we have a boots of speed, I'm not too attached to the rampant battery. So maybe double block like so. Could also chump Thali and essentially trade for Charger. But also want to make sure we have enough creatures left to equip with Akiri rounds in case of more removal. So this seems okay for now. Gonna be an eye gancho taking out Samurai. Alright, just make our battery indestructible. Not the end of the world. And then now Akiri. Might as well equip Akiri itself. And then we keep Charger back to maybe trade for Thalia. Yeah, that seems fine. Gonna be four mana. At least we don't have to worry about a wandering emperor, just a spellbinder making battery more expensive. And our opponent's gonna hang back. I can play another rabbit battery, equipping both on charger, making it a three powered creature. Probably better off keeping Akiri's indestructible ability available. And then. Do I just attack with Akiri and see what we draw? Don't hate that. Find a replacement. Bones jumping. That's fine. And then play another battery. Could play a tapped den, or we can equip a battery to charger and then uh, keep up Akiri's ability, which I don't mind here. And pass. So now we could see Wandering Emperor exile Akiri, but then we have a backup, so it's not at the end of the world. They could also attempt to destroy our equipment with the Initiate. If they attack, train and then remove two counters. But we have plenty of batteries as equipment here. So how about we block like so, with the plan of just trading Charger for Initiate and see what happens. Okay, that works. And then now they can maybe use the counters from initiates to take out our artifacts, but that's most of their turn gone. Alright, it's going to be Wandering Emperor to put a plus one counter on initiate instead. That will save it, but it's still not the most efficient use of Emperor, so it's going to just minus on Akiri instead. That's fine. As we mentioned, we have a backup. And uh, the Indestructible here not going to help against Exile. So we can play Akiri, and then kind of want to equip one of my creatures so we can draw. So how about we equip Boots of Speed to Akiri, and then maybe Battery onto another Battery. Not that useful now since we only need to deal one damage to Emperor, but can maybe save us one mana later. Luminarch Aspirant into Adelin, okay. That could be a problem. Let's 
So now Aspirant can put counter on Akiri. That can attack and see what we draw. Ooh, Storm's Edge. That's an exciting draw. Opponent takes it. So do we want to show them Storm's Edge, or do we maybe keep up like a Den of the Bugbear as an extra blocker? Playing Storm's Edge might be fine, even though Brutal Cathar could exile it. As it is a 3-3 first strike after all, and then we still have Akira's ability to maybe save a Rabbit Battery which can chump a larger Adeline. Just a Thalia. And Spellbinder is gonna seal land. But it is another flyer. See, so yeah, I will need some life gain or flying here to break this board stall. And then now, since battery was already equipped, we have the mana to potentially make it indestructible. So the one mana we spent earlier might actually benefit us now. Plus one counter on the token. And just Adeline attacking so we can eat the token. And then use Akiri. Make battery indestructible. Alright. And now opponent has a 5 toughness Adeline back. I can equip several creatures onto Akiri here with battery. And then attack with Akiri. Able to make it indestructible, and then attack again, drawing several cards in the process. Yeah, I guess we'll equip one more here. Counter on... I want to say... Akiri. So draws gives us an extra combat step. Opponent forced to chump. And then we get an extra counter, this time probably fine on Ryu. And just send Akiri. We'll keep Ryu back. And picked up a Selfless Samurai. Would have been nice earlier, but I'll still take it. Thalia chumps. So, have to be a little careful about how many equipment we move away from Akiri. So now we can play Samurai. And move some equipment around. Let's say... Battery goes on to... Ryu, making it 5 power. Can maybe even make it one bigger. And then pass. Might have wanted to leave myself with two white mana to activate Akiri twice. Another spellbinder. Opponent can fly over for seven. Make a 1-1 which we can kill. And then, yeah, gotta make it happen here. But with a life gain from Samurai, we might be fine now. Okay. So I can maybe move one equipment elsewhere. I can activate Den, so that's ready to attack second main and can maybe pick up an equipment here. Let's say... The uh, Boots of Speed. And then, do I want to move anything else around? Can put Boss Funk Counter on the Ryu. And then... Probably attack with most of our team. And get to draw. Finding a Blade Master, which is also quite powerful here. Alright, opponent's gonna chump. We'll gain six. 
And then they'll have two blockers left, which is not going to be enough to survive. Counter doesn't matter too much now. Put it on Aspirants. Attack with the team. Draw another card, and there we have it. So yeah, close grindy game here against Mono White Aggro. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Charger can be equipped, turn two. And then we have Akiri to potentially draw a card right away when Charger attacks. And in fact, I'm probably better off just playing the boots here instead of Charger, since next turn we can give it haste anyway. And now if it dies, it will deal two damage on the way out. Opponent on an Esper deck. Off to a slower start. And there's our Storm's Edge. A right on cue. Aspirin's fine. Okay, so we can play Storm's Edge and then attack with one of our two creatures. Probably Akiri is my guess, otherwise they would just trade for Charger right away. And then we can attack with both afterwards. That seems fine. Could also try and play Maul first. Which could also potentially work. Expect Aspirin to trade. Opponent's at 8. And a Maul on one of our two creatures with Storm's Edge in play would be lethal. But even another Samurai with Haste would be quite effective. So your opponent's in trouble. The most they can meet hook massacre for here is two, which is not enough. So our opponent's gonna pass, probably with a wandering emperor available. So what's the best way for us to beat a wandering emperor? I guess we can play selfless samurai and then give it haste. Attack with it, draw from Akiri, take an extra combat step, Emperor Exile Samurai most likely, and then we can finish off Emperor plus still hit the opponent. That seems fine. Akiri's ability giving indestructible not useful against exile effects. So Samurai attacks. Draws a card as well. And there's Wandering Emperor as we suspected. And we can even sacrifice Samurai to deny the life gain here of Wandering Emperor. And then now can either put the opponent to two or probably better to finish off Emperor. And then I could equip Boots and keep up Akiri's indestructible ability. So best case scenario for the opponent to have a Meatook Massacre for three, just gonna be a specialist instead. That's not gonna save them, especially now with Maul giving one of our creatures flying. All right. Can attack for six and then attack for six again, drawing multiple cards in the process. Awesome, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play and seems acceptable, even though we could use more red. Turn one, probably get in with a rabbit battery. And then we can eventually use battery as an equipment to get more damage in with Ryu as well. Red mine is good. Double charger. Charger plus equip with battery also an option. But especially against a deck with counter spells, we want to just resolve our threats. And then we can maybe equip while the opponent keeps up a counter spell. And that seems fine now. 
This way we have a warrior that can maybe attack twice with Ryu down. And get more damage in. Right, March gonna exile our battery. So just hit for two. And Celestus for ramp. Well, at least we'll get resolve Ryu here. Although might end up getting bounced. Boots of Speed's nice too. I think I'm still better off resolving our 4 drop, or at least trying to. And then we can attack with one charger, get our extra combat step, and attack with both. Alright. Hope to dodge a sweeper. And then more creatures are welcome, especially now with Boots of Speed to give them haste. Opponent lets it switch to Knight. So we could see a Wandering Emperor here. Discarding Fateful Absence cannot be good for us. But let's see what other removal they have. By playing Samurai first and then we might see removal in response. That resolved. Well, I guess I'll give it haste now. And then Samurai can be the first to attack. And then we'll attack with a team. Now it's going to be a March exiling Ryu that we cannot save with Samurai. So that's too bad. We'll just hit for five then. And I kind of like moving the boots to Charger so it has one more power in case of a sweeper. So it deals more damage on the way out. Does Daneful Stroke discard it? Now a 6 mana available. Farewell would be quite annoying. But our opponent passes. And Celestis transforms once again. So their hands must be pretty stacked now. Another boots to draw. Equip Charger. And attack with the team. There's a Wandering Emperor, as we suspected. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. It's going to make a Samurai token. At least it trades for all our creatures. Alright, that works. And I guess we'll keep the equipment as is. So not loving our spot here, opponent's still at 7, active planeswalker, plenty of cards in hand, and we're just top decking. So one charger gets exiled, opponent back up to 9. At least the boots of speed means every creature we top deck can attack right away, so that's nice. But our opponent's hand's probably full of removal at this point, having discarded a couple counter spells. Nico, another powerful planeswalker here, takes out Fireblade Charger, we'll kill Nico on the way out. Okay, Blade Master gets a healthy attack in. Go on that three. And just activating Celestus has to be good for us. Gets rid of another copy. Back up to five. Well, it's possible they don't have any removal. And uh, Storm's Edge, an excellent draw, assuming it resolves. Although if they counter it, they probably just die to the Blade Master anyway. Fateful Absence kills Blade Master. But now we can give Ryu haste and attack twice for four, which is lethal. Awesome. Very close game against blue-white control. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play. Our hands, okay. Uh, probably play Sundown Pass so we can guarantee turn two Samurai. And then we can either equip Etro Virtue or a Mall of the Skyclaves before playing Akiri. Opponent on a Bant deck. Make that four colors. All right, so I don't really feel like equipping myself with Samurai. So I'll just play Akiri and then wait on the equipment for a little bit in case your opponent's holding spot removal. And then Samurai can also protect Akiri. It's gonna be Vanishing Verse. Fair enough. Ideally, we have an equipped creature. So Akiri can start netting a few extra cards. And then Storm's Edge is also going to be a lot more effective if we have an equipped creature that can attack multiple times. But could see just playing Storm's Edge next turn anyway. Well, March killing Akiri is going to force the issue. And let's hope our opponent's out of removal. Otherwise, I guess we still have a creature land we can activate next turn. Storm's Edge, much better if we can benefit from the extra attack step right away. But it looks like our opponent's a heavy control deck. They played Soaring City, so they might have a different answer or an Asika's Chariot. Okay, fair enough. Well, we can fly over Asika's Chariot at least and deal quite a bit of damage in the process. So there's still a chance. Would have been nice to get the benefit from lifelink off Selfless Samurai as well. But we'll have to be happy dealing 14 damage. So if our opponent doesn't have an answer here, we could still get there. It's gonna be another march. Well, at least it was a two for one, but down goes Storm's Edge. Eater Virtue picking up first strike in the process. And now we're under a pretty fast clock from the chariots. With a cat token to block Den. Okay, Selfless Samurai is probably a fine draw. And then equip Eater Virtue. And next turn we can equip Maul. It's not going to be a lethal attack after the opponent gained a bunch of march, but it'll get us there in a couple attacks. Another vanishing verse, yeah. That's removal tribal plus one powerful threat to snowball board advantage. And yeah, it might be too little too late. So what's my best hope here? If I attack with Den, our opponent just blocks, takes one, and then next turn we're facing a six damage, opponent makes another cat. Whereas if I play Boots of Speed, what am I hoping to top deck? Let's say I draw Bruinor, I can equip Maul for free, equip Boots of Speed for one mana, that's five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so that would be lethal. So I think playing Boots and hoping to top deck Bruinor is probably our best bet. But it's still probably wishful thinking here. But yeah, it's still kind of awesome that despite being so far behind, we still have an out in the spot. Assuming our opponent doesn't have any interaction left. So we're down to six. And our opponent passes with interaction up, I'm sure, and just to maul the draw. Alright, GG's. Didn't quite get there. Tainted Indulgence was not an answer, so yeah, it's possible Brunor off the top could have done it. Would we have gotten there with another Storm's Edge? We can play it, give it haste, but opponent has plenty of ground blockers. So I don't think Storm's Edge would have been good enough.
opponent attacks with all, so even if we block with Den, we're still dead. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand, especially if we can find a couple more lands and equipment. For now, Charger into probably Blade Master, so it can gain lifelink off Samurai. Okay, Aspirants is tempting, although now that our opponent's on a red deck, sort of liking Samurai to protect Aspirant from a potential burn spell, and then play its main phase, so Charger gains lifelink. Alright, Voltage Surge takes it out. That happens. And then now we could go for Akiri. To be mana efficient, probably want this on white. Or we can Aspirant to put counter on Charger, which is also pretty nice in and of itself. I'll go for Akiri still. When in doubt, make the mana efficient play. And then another Voltage Surge wouldn't be able to kill it. And it does seem like they have another one in hand. Iteration to go digging. So hopefully they don't have a mountain here. Alright, it's gonna be a Soaring City. Could still represent a Bounce spell. But at least Aspirin gets to put a counter somewhere first. And probably like it on Charger. A reason to put it on Akiri is if we play Ryu and attack, we want to have a large creature so we can attack with it twice. Alright, Spikefield Hazard was the removal spell instead. Also would have been good against Charger exiling it so it doesn't deal damage on the way out. And our opponent is three colors. Okay. There's an equipment. So if we suspect another Voltage Surge, we could equip Akiri instead of Charger. Could also not equip it yet and instead play another two drop, which I also don't mind. Although best case scenario, I guess we equip and draw into a land so we can still play our two drop afterwards. Next turn we could see a sweeper, which is also reason not to overextend. So let's try playing the eater and see if it resolves. Keep white man available and then probably equip Akiri itself. And attack. And there's a Voltage Surge killing Charger. That works. Alright, we drew the land. Now, question remains, do we play 2-drop or keep up Akiri's indestructible ability? In case of a sweeper next turn, opponent is at 6. So I feel like keeping up Indestructible is good enough, and then next turn Ryu could potentially close out the game for us. There's a gold span as usual. Let's see if they also have an interactive spell to follow up. Get to untap. And there's a few ways we could do this. Tap out for Ryu. And then that would be lethal. Could instead play Aspirant, put counter on Akiri. And then keep Akiri's indestructible ability available. Or we can slam down a Maul. So if they had a Bounce spell, I feel like they would have played it earlier. So it's mostly Burn spells we're afraid of. And they can potentially kill Aspirant before it puts a counter somewhere. So Maul or Ryu might be the safest plays. Maul plays around Disdainful Stroke, whereas Ryu does not. And Maul also keeps up the Eater's ability, so I think we'll go for Maul. It's gonna be a negate, alright. That's something that we could have defeated with Ryu, potentially. Better points at 1. And we have a potentially indestructible Akiri in play. Hmm. 
Let's see if Goldspan stays back. It does. Okay, now I'm lacking double aspirants, or maybe samurai first and then aspirants, which... That way we can also protect one of the creatures in play. Although a bounce spell could still get us. Jewelry disruption. Probably pay the one. And then just trade samurai for gold span essentially. And that also keeps an extra layer of protection with Akiri's ability. And make disappear. Okay. So that resolves. Now probably still attack to trade for gold span, draw cards, and hope to hit a land. Charger, also quite threatening with the opponent at one life. So I'm not going to use Akira's ability, otherwise our opponent gets to keep Goldspan. And then Charger equipped with Eater also gains haste. So do we play Charger first or maybe bait out some interaction with an Aspirant, let's say. Dragon's Fire, the Aspirant, that's fine. One card in hand. And it better be a Bounce Spell for their sake. But Charger crosses the finish line, awesome. So Jeskai Control also falling to the equipment deck. Alright, we got to see our red-white equipment deck in action, and got to see some cool moments with Ryu giving us extra attack steps, being quite relevant, especially alongside Akiri drawing extra cards. So that synergy is great, although sadly Akiri will rotate out of standard soon, but we can maybe still work with Ryu equipment and other warriors to fill out our deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.